Welcome to Central Church's online devotional ministry. These short devotions are intended to provide inspiration and hope to all people, including our friends, neighbors, and church members. We hope that you find them both meaningful and helpful as you search for spiritual food. It's our prayer that you discover new ways to serve Christ and be about His work in the world. Here's Pastor Bob. Today I would like to talk about another one of the Old Testament institutions, the Mosaic institutions as they are sometimes called. And this has to do with the system of sacrifice as we find it in the Old Testament, particularly in the books of Exodus and Leviticus. Sacrifice of animals which results in atonement. Atonement is an English word which basically means at one mint. The word atone is two English words at one. Atone means reconciliation, concord, harmony. The gulf between human beings and God is very great because of the intrusion of sin into this world. How does reconciliation take place? How are human beings and God brought together, separated by this wide gap that seemingly cannot be bridged? The answer of Moses in the institutions that he gave to the people of Israel was the system of sacrifice, as we find it detailed in the books of Exodus and Leviticus. There were many offerings that could be made to atone for sins, for deliberate sins, uh, for sins of omission, for inadvertent sins, an elaborate system. The holiest day on the Hebrew calendar was the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement was the day that the chief priest of Israel entered the Holy of Holies in the temple in Jerusalem and in the tabernacle before the temple was built. And the chief priest would take with him into the Holy of Holies the blood of the sacrificed goat. And that blood would be spread around the Holy of Holies on the mercy seat, which was the covering to the Ark of the Covenant. And the sins of the people would be atoned for. Now Exodus tells us that there were two goats that were selected each year, goats to be sacrificed. And by lots, by the casting of of a lot in some way, one of those goats was chosen to be the goat sacrificed for the Lord, called the goat for the Lord. The other goat became the scapegoat, or in Hebrew, the goat for Azazel. This goat was driven into the wilderness was taken to the edge of Jerusalem and was driven into the barren wastes of Judea to carry the sins of the people away. The scapegoat, which we don't talk about in the Christian tradition that much, was called by Martin Luther the goat of departure. The sins are carried away. Now both of these goats are innocent. They are guilty of no sin. We do know of Jesus as the sacrifice, and we have many hymns about the blood of Christ. We have many pictures of the crucifixion of Jesus, which are in churches and which hang in art galleries and have been put together over the centuries. Not so many pictures of the scapegoat. A picture by the French uh, 19th century artist James Tussaud of the scapegoat is an interesting one, for it shows the goat being driven down a steep hill, being driven into the wilderness. And with the goat is Jesus himself carrying a lamb. Jesus with the goat, Jesus as the scapegoat, but Jesus also as the good shepherd. There are many words that we associate with atonement in the Christian church, the word expiation, which means the covering over of sin, the placating and the appeasement 
of the anger of God against sin taken away by the shed blood of the goat in Old Testament times, year after year, century after century, sin expiated for by the shed blood of Jesus. Propitiation, the remitting of sins, enemies become friends. We use the word vicarious, uh, the suffering of one for another, particularly innocent suffering. Atonement is reconciliation between those who are far apart. In Paul's letter to the Romans, uh, chapter 5, verses 6 through 11, we read of the atonement. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person someone might possibly dare to God die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since we now have been justified by his blood, how much more shall we be saved from God's wrath through him? For if while we were God's enemies, we were reconciled to him through the death of his son, how much more having been reconciled shall we be saved through his life? Not only is this so, but we also boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we now have received reconciliation. The Old Testament gives us some outstanding examples of reconciliation, of atonement. We have the story of Jacob and Esau, two brothers who had been at enmity, had been at odds all of their lives. Jacob had been in exile for many years because of his differences with Esau, and he returns to the land of Israel, and he is wondering what will happen. How will his brother Esau receive him? And we read in Genesis 33, But Esau ran to meet Jacob and embraced him. He threw his arms around his neck and kissed him, and they wept. And then a few chapters later on, at the death of Isaac, their father, we read, And his sons Esau and Jacob buried him. We also have in the Old Testament the story of Joseph and his brothers. Joseph sold into slavery in Egypt by his brothers. Their father Jacob was told that he was dead. Years later, Joseph is the prime minister of Egypt. His brothers go down to Egypt in a time of famine he reveals himself to them. I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into slavery. Genesis chapter 45. And then he threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept. And Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. Atonement, reconciliation. Atonement with God given to us by Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Our sins are forgiven. We are at one with God because of the work of Christ. Let us pray. Our Lord and God, we thankfully come before you, thanking you for your death on the cross, thanking you for the knowledge of Christ we have in our hearts, and thanking you for the atonement we have with you through the work of Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. We invite you to visit our church website at cpcteranum.org to learn more about our ministries. You can also visit us on Facebook at Central Presbyterian Church Terenum. Please join us as we renew lives, inspire hope, and serve others. God bless you.